Dawson Rider Review. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Dragon Dagger, our first ever roleplay weapon replica in the Lightning Collection line after our first deviation from the figures with the helmet. As always, I'm going to start with the most important part that everyone wants to see, which is the box. But honestly, it's a pretty cool box. Very in keeping with the Lightning Collection style. You know, the Green Ranger art there. Here's the dagger. You have a little sketch of the Dragon Zord there. 18 plus, so they don't get caught by Copa. And then on the back here, you got the back showing like, oh, here's the functions and music, in case you didn't know, like, music. Uh, there's the top. And then what's really cool is I like the way it opens up and, like, the Dragon Dagger was in here. And then there's a little shot there where they photoshopped out hashtag Team Silver Stripe for life. Uh, but they kind of just go over the functions and then have a little bit of art of Dragon Zord there and lightning collection style like just one note I think this is cool but it's kind of impossible to get it back in there if you wanted to keep it in box or display it or something which is kind of a nitpick that's like really a nitpick because why would you want to put it back in the box anyway let's get to the actual thing so here's the main event the stand comes with a stand which I think is really cool like it's not like the most you know expensive feeling one and Dawson forgot to even clip these all the way in it's kind of cool the way you have this Green Ranger insignia here it's like unique but I kind of wish that it had the coin. I think that would make more sense, but still I think it's kind of neat and something the Legacy one didn't have and I like being able to display it like that. I think that's a neat bonus, something they didn't have to do and obviously if you don't like it you can just set it to the side, but it's something that I do appreciate. So we're going to go over the main functions and everything about this guy first and then I will be doing a comparison at the end to the Legacy version as well as the original release from Bandai from the 90s. So this is a pretty good size, pretty much very close to one-to-one. -to -one. I don't know if that's the intention, but it's a very good size. It's not a classic, you know, PR roleplay normal line weapon size, which you'll see when I compare it to the original version. And it looks pretty good mostly. I will say that it kind of feels cheap, especially in comparison to the Legacy version. It just doesn't have that premium collector quality feel to it, just both in the way it looks a bit and the way it feels. It feels very light and cheap. That doesn't mean it's not cool. And in some ways it is more show accurate. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where there's like multiple versions in both G-Ranger and MMPR where depending on what scene it's more accurate, but it is more accurate in some ways um, And I do like the kind of like weathered look of the silver here It is like a, a flimsy plastic here, which kind of sucks, but it does look cool with that I really appreciate that the paint looks clear you ha do have the clear right here because it lights up which can look a little bit off But this looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit subdued down here, but I think overall mostly very decent looking I do like it. I just wish it had a little bit something more to it. So you have a couple different modes and you switch the modes by cranking it one way or the other. And right now we're on mode one, which is the mode where you can play stuff yourself. And then you have this button and it plays stuff back at you. But you can play songs yourself. You can play the Dragon Zord tunes yourself, you can play the Office theme, you can play Darth Vader's theme, you can play Kylo Ren's theme, so you can do it yourself. Like, at first when I got this, I thought you always had to do it yourself. Don't worry guys, there is a mode where it'll play it for you. I was about to be outraged, I was like, play the tune for me, I'm not your maid! What's really cool is you can play it yourself and it gives you the instructions on how to play the main theme, and then it will repeat it back at you with Dragon Zord noises. So let me do that, I might mess up so I might have to jump cut around, but let's do this. So that's actually really cool. I like the ability to be able to do that. It feels satisfying and you get a bonus noise beyond just playing it regular and you can see that it lit up there. Speaking of, there's a little switch right here which activates lightsaber mode and it'll make these type of noises and you can interrupt it with that and power down, power up, but it just kind of makes like electrical crackling noises and I didn't mean to press that button interrupted it but that's kind of cool and it looks neat and it's another little feature that the other one didn't have so that's cool okay so now to switch modes just crank this and you'll hear that little mechanical noise which sounds like coins going into an arcade machine to signify that you've changed it and this one is the do it not do it yourself mode this is the one where it actually does it for you So that is just like the original Legacy version. So I like that ability to be able to play it and it sounds clear and crisp and as accurate as possible to the show. And then this button here will play an instrumental version of the theme song. Hopefully I won't have to cut this out later.
I'm just gonna cut it short just in case, but it's an instrumental, not the full regular version. Now, when you hold this button down, you get access to some remixes of MMPR themes. So hold this down. It's like the chill version, like, I'm in a waiting room, but it's also morphin' time. And then... It's another remix version. This is like going to the club, but it's also Morphin' Time as well. Woo! Did you hear that? Woo! So that's pretty cool. I do like that ability. I like the tunes. I think they're unique. Again, it adds something a little bit extra special to it, which I think is a nice bonus. That being said, how do we have two of these like premium Dragon Dagger releases and neither one of them plays Go Green Ranger Go? Like that could have been a really good way to set this apart from the other versions. Speaking of, let's go ahead and compare them, shall we? Okay, so here we have all three just aesthetically. There's Hasbro's, here is the Lightning release, and here is the original 90s release. As you can see, this is the superior one. But this is where you can really tell it doesn't have those kitty proportions. Like, even though the Dragon Dagger is actually perfect for a PR role-playing weapon because it's already a dagger, but you can see the clear difference there. Like, these are the main two ones we're going to be comparing, but I wanted to mainly compare the different sounds, and then I'll kind of do more of a, a direct comparison aesthetically between these two because I wanted to talk about it. But let me make sure it's on the right mode. So... That's clearly the best one. Nothing beats the 90s original. <laughs> Damn. So good. But let's just do one more time for this one, just for the classic tune. So as you can see, this one's the clear winner. Screw these losers. Go buy yourself a 90s original. 90s were the best nostalgia forever! Okay, all kidding aside, honestly, I think the sounds for like the main songs on these are both good. I feel like these ones seem a little more accurate and these seem like a little bit more of a recreation, but I think they're both good and I don't have a huge problem with it. This one also does play like the full regular classic theme song compared to this. So much music, too much MMPR, get it away. There we go, so this one plays just like the regular full instrumental type theme, and this one plays like some variations on the instrumental one. I think it's kind of a little bit more crisp on that one here. Again, I wish one of them played Go Green Ranger Go. A bonus here is that this one does not have the play it yourself mode. You just have the theme song, and then the, it actually plays the complete songs for you. And then this one has clashing noises that this one doesn't have. This one does not have lights or anything like that, it just has sounds. And when you activate the th songs for this one, you have to hold this down, like, with my finger or your mouth. Which can be kind of annoying, like when I was just trying to demo it there, but I actually really liked that. I thought it was a cool little roleplay feature. I liked being able to put my mouth on this. That sounded weird. I didn't mean for it to, but you know what I mean. I think this was cool. Like, maybe some people just really don't like that and found it to be kind of annoying, but I thought it was kind of a cool way to differentiate the modes that made it a little more accurate. I mean, neither one of them are a true flute, but still. But now, as we talk about it aesthetically, like I said, I think this one is a little more accurate in some ways because it wasn't so bright and shiny most of the time in the show here. That being said, guys, I really like this one a lot more. Even if it's not the most show accurate, I'm just talking about aesthetically. Like, this one looks so good, and I still really like this. It makes such a great display piece. It looks impressive, it feels impressive, it has die cast in it. Like, when I got this, it was still one of my favorite legacy items, and it still is, but it just felt like, yeah, this is a premium quality item, whereas this one just doesn't quite have that feel altogether, but I think this has its bonuses. I think that 
Overall, even though I like the sounds on this one, and the theme song is crisp, and I like the way that this functions, I do think that this one has a little bit more robust features. I do like the ability to play your own music, and I like the ability to be able to sort of change it up with the different theme songs. So I think they both have their pluses and minuses, and I think you'll be happy with either depending on what you want. For a final verdict on this guy, I overall do like it, and I think it's a solid first outing. And I think if you missed out on the Legacy Dragon Dagger, you're going to be getting most of the features and a solid Dragon Dagger here, certainly better than the original version. So I definitely do like it and have fun with it, but there is something a little bit off about it for me where it doesn't feel quite as quality as I would have liked it to. And I would say that I do prefer personally the Legacy one slightly, but I think in a lot of ways, feature-wise, they're almost even. As with this one, I prefer and I like being able to play the theme yourself. Nice addition to it, but with a Legacy one, I did like the ability of having this in the works so that it kind of felt like the Dragon Dagger. But yeah, that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.